we're part of a web, right? So if we are that, that creator of that web, we've created a web so extended that we can't see the outside of where it's kind of going because the web is so big. We're focusing on the inside and keep on moving through the inside part of it. And as we are, are building within ourselves, within the inside, and the web grows outwards, it's like anything could touch it and vibrate back towards you because now your web, your energetic frequency is out that far. So as you bring yourself in that place of center and really feel this expansion, like how you're feeling that expansion, how you said, it's like all this, I feel, I'll say like, that's where I feel like the quantum leap happens or the quantum jump happens. Zach Liotis is a beacon of light in the realm of spiritual awakening and empowerment. With a profound understanding of personal energy frequency and a deep connection to the divine, Zach seeks as a serves as a guide, mentor, and catalyst for transformation. As a spiritual alchemist, Zach is passionate about helping individuals tap into the frequency of God's divine presence within themselves. With a blend of spiritual wisdom and practical insight, Zach empowers others to unlock their inner potential, overcome obstacles, and manifest their deepest desires in alignment with their creator. Throughout our own journey, Zach has discovered the transformative power of aligning with God's frequency. Now she shares her insights and experiences with others, offering guidance on how to navigate life's challenges with faith, grace, and resilience, harnessing the frequency of God's presence and a living life of purpose, abundance, and spiritual fulfillment. Welcome, Zach. Hello. How are you, my love? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. I just can't stop admiring your hair. I must say, you look like a whole different person to me with that hair. Well, thank you, because I've done so much changing on the inside, I need to change the outside. You know how that works, mm -hmm. eventually that's what happens. And I'm not done with the transformation. This is just the beginning of where I wanna go. You know, so, so that's what I'm really excited about is that it was like, I think it's time for a new look. And I was just getting to that point of where I felt in alignment with that, since that seems to be my new word is alignment. Um, <laughs> but you know, you know how alignment is. I mean, you, we, you work through alignment all the time. It's like, we're always tweaking and maneuvering and yeah. That's, alignment. That's what you have to do regardless of what we're doing and wanting to move forward. We always need to align ourselves with our truth. And in that sense of truth, I know, I'm, I think we're getting right to the show, obviously, because spirit's like going right through, but the show is truly about letting it all go and surrendering. So this is about alignment, because as we get into alignment and grow in alignment, we have to release certain energies from our energetic frequency in order con to continuously stay in alignment. So as we do our hair, because I always think of hair as the most incredible transformation. I've had blue hair. I've had black hair. I've had burgundy hair. I've had pink hair. I've had black hair. Like I've had every, and I loved it because it was different parts of, it almost felt like the muses were coming out of me in those hairstyles. And it was massive transformation. So I find every time I do something to my hair, regardless if it's how I'm wearing it, how I'm styling it, I'm very simple. I could only use a, a straighter, straightener. So I find that that's a whole transformational frequency. And then all of a sudden, when you start transforming your hair, your clothes start transforming, your whole being starts trans. That's how, um, bold fierce unstoppable happened i just watched my clients go through this massive transformation and all the, the three words that came to me was be bold fierce unstoppable because it's exactly what they just i saw right before my eyes and i was like that's so beautiful to see those transformations so i like the journey we're we're unraveling with you here yeah i mean i mean i'm like wearing this it's like one of it's a comfortable shirt and i like it and it's like nah it's not working anymore is I went, I'm going through my closet going, oh no, not working anymore. I got to yeah. do something because yeah. my hair is so different. Yeah. And even though some of my clothes are designed for this hair, not all of them are designed for yeah. this hair anymore. Yeah. And it's just kind of wild. So I'm, you know, and then it's like, yep, time to go clothes shopping now, you know, give, put on, put on the new swag, so to speak. Yay. 
That's you know, when real transformation and quantum jumping happens. It's truly like you just went into like this new frequency because you totally let go of all the shit that you're holding on to. Like the baggage is off of you and it's like you're free, right? Like it's this massive quantum. I've been talking to myself about quantum jumping for the last week and a half. So this is so amazing. When you let go of the shit, look at everything that happens to us. Well, and see, and I've been looking and studying into quantum leaping anyways for the last couple of months. And and what is one of the things they say? First of all, it's mainly your mindset, as you know. And the other part is loving, just allowing and loving where you are. Because right now I have this house of cats that are having issues. And so what did they say? One of the things you should do is just love, 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 love. Say it, show it. You love each other. You love each other. You love each other. You're the best of friends and I'm doing that. So I haven't had a fight yet. I've had a few growls, but not fights. And, and, and I think it's going to work because I'm constantly trying to get that out. But the other thing that's even cooler, let me tell you this one little story, is we're back in our basement trying to get it done. Okay. We've got the poly down. We've got some of the um, skids down for the boxes. I had to take all my plastic bottles out of cardboard and put them into totes. I have two more big boxes, 900 oh, bottles to do. So I've got that done and we're finished drying it out. We're, st we're almost finished with bearing one more five foot section to bury the um, tubing to go into the um, sump pump area because Sal wants to bring the plants in, right? So when I got rid of all these boxes, it's like, Sal's like, well, where are you gonna put them? I'm like, they're going in the friggin' trash and I don't care, I will make them fit in the trash because we were picking up all this gross smelly plastic that was down in the basement to begin with, that's all moldy and everything. And, and I said, and I'm bringing them upstairs and I said, well, that's more garbage out of my unconscious mind coming to light that I no longer need and I'm throwing it away. I mean, it's like everything I do feels like I'm getting rid of more garbage that's up in here that I don't even know that was there. But yeah, something yeah. was there that's just, it's shifting out of my way and I love it. It's so funny that you're bringing that up because the last little while I keep on hearing spirits say, declutter your house, declutter your house. And I'm like, but I don't really have anything to declutter. Like I've literally given away my clothes out to one degree, right? Like I don't have anything to declutter. So what am I decluttering? And it's like, okay, I'm going through a mind decluttering right now because I know there's some things that are showing up subconsciously, but I'm not realizing it consciously, but I'm re recognizing in some patterns that are coming up for me. That's the way I'm realizing this. And so I'm like, okay, so it's not even decluttering my environmental home, but it's really decluttering my inner home. And when we're decluttering that inner home, it's like, going really deep within ourself and maybe things are not going to make sense. I find sometimes things don't make sense, but it doesn't matter all the time if it does or doesn't make sense as long as it's coming out of me. And it's interesting because I could guarantee you once I declutter the inside of me, there will be things around me that I end up decluttering. Like you're dealing with your basement right now. You've been dealing with your basement for the last year. Like I know the whole basement story. So it's, it's like when we're fully ready in our own subconsciousness to remove those bins that have been going on for the last year there and fully let it go. It's now you had to kind of shift that within you now outside of you because the outside of you and inside of you didn't quite get into that same align alignment your word again alignment right so it's so beautiful when we fully let go and surrender and i feel like i'm at that point too because um the last show that i was supposed to be on but as we both know spirit was like it's not gonna happen because i was going through a journey in my life where my mom fell and that was such a huge energetic shift for me as well. Her journey was a massive shift in my own consciousness as well. And so we could go through these massive shifts at any time, but it always happens. I find when there's some sort of a tragedy, like your basement tragedy was it, that it flooded. My situation of my journey was because my mom fell and I'm the one that found her. 
and I'm her, her main caregiver. So there's in that tragedy, we find some sort of a light within our own self. So that's how that growth happens because we can't continuously let hold on to what the past has been doing to us. And if we do, you will be, never be able to quantum leap or quantum jump or even get to walk on the other side of the bridge if you're holding on for dear life on one side. So you really have to have, I, I always say to myself, like, what, what is the reason behind this? What is the reason as to why I'm doing all these things? And I focus on the reason and I, I, I feel the outcome. And, and, then, and I believe that is, that is exactly what's happened with me. I knew that I would eventually get to this place in the basement, but it was, at that point, for the last year and almost six months, four months, whatever it's been, it's been overwhelming. And I've yes. been ready to go in, but then I have a sow. Because Sal's like, I got to get the steps done first. It's like, well, when are you going to get the steps done? Because we had to secure our basement steps because you talked about our steps. Something was wrong with our basement steps. And we discovered what was wrong with our basement steps. No way. <laughs> yeah. There was something wrong with them and they were going to collapse. Oh, because Lord. they weren't anchored. They were not anchored. So Sal ended up when we discovered that when we pulled back the poly and thank god for the flood or we wouldn't have known that and something could have happened to us very easily because of how much we take up and down that step in that basement and sometimes it's not light stuff but i'm going to continue this when we come back from the commercial break ready to discover the deeper purpose of your life kathleen flanagan's soul journey course guides you through profound spiritual awakening helping you connect with your higher self and unlock the wisdom within. Embark on a journey of transformation and self-discovery. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and start your soul journey today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we have Zach Liotis in the room with us today. So as I was saying, we discovered that our basement stairs were not anchored, so Sal ended up putting... Um, poured concrete and then two by fours to go up to hold the top part and we have to anchor the center part as well so he did all of that to get those stairs now you can sit there and they're solid they're not squeaking they're not wobbly they're not anything anymore so that was the main thing but the reason i had to wait for him too because he's like well this is your fault i said oh no it's not because we've been waiting for the stairs and now because it's fall and we have two grow tents and a hydroponic system and the plants have to come in from outside and we have no place to put them. <laughs> so all of a sudden we have a motivation to get the basement done, which I am so glad because I really want it done. And we kicked our butts over the weekend just trying to get a good start on this. And so we're probably going to start loading some of the stuff into the crawl space to start getting space there. But it feels good because it's like I'm organizing my unconscious part of my mind. Like we're actually organizing as we're going. And I'm like, well, that was a great idea because he built these massive shelves and all the other bookshelves we had. Now I'm putting all of my awakening spirit stuff on it, all my product and and things like that. Even though I have shelves for finish, now I have more shelving for the raw materials. And it's like, oh my God, this is so much better. Yeah. I, it's like, you know, and it's just like, there's this like, phew, like this real calming peace inside. Like, yeah. wow, I didn't know there was like all these little gremlins in there doing whatever they were doing, you know? So <laughs> I, I'm just loving and it's, but you have to be ready. It's like what you said, you have to be ready. There's that shift in alignment, energy frequencies, whatever it is. But as long as we're moving forward, we're going to eventually have that poof transformation. Look at, I'm going to change my hair color. You know, yeah. look at the world gets to see me now. Yeah. You know what? It's so funny because as you're saying, like, you know, I feel so much lighter out here. Spirit saying to me, it's like after like you've been constipated for so long and then you take a good poop and you just feel like, oh my God, I feel like I lost 10 pounds, right? Someone that came out of the colon hydrotherapy industry, like when we we're doing colonics on people, I saw people's 
energy shift, like their, their emotion shifted. I had, I had people on my table, like literally like yelling and screaming as they're getting a colonic because it was so attached to emotions. So we don't realize the burdens that are going even on inside of us is literally an imprint of what's happening to us spiritually and energetically. So I totally get what you mean by like, it's like, oh, like the sense of inner peace and freedom came out, like this weight just got released. And that's what I think when you were saying that, I could see like in my vision of the past, like people coming out of the room and just like almost going in circles as I'm like, oh, you have the, the dog, the, the good dog feeling moment right now. I used to crack up jokes about it because when you fully surrender and let go, not only within you, but outside of you, like your environment, the people that you may surround yourself with, or even family, friends, whatever it is, career, once you start st stepping into that sense of your truth, and that's what it is, it's really stepping into your truth. Once you get into that place of your truth and not have this imposter syndrome or not feeling good enough or need to people please and all that other stuff and you're totally at peace with yourself. That's the most liberating feeling. I felt that at 50. I felt like when I felt that, I was like, this is the most, I, that's, what, that's like a good, whew, that release moment. And I was like, I, you know, I've been through life now. I've been through the ups and downs. I have no one to please. I have, I'm my worst enemy. I really don't care what anyone thinks about me, what it says about me. Like I am just who I am. I find once you get to that place, it's like liberation. And you could get there really early in your life or you get you're, you know you get there later on in life because you have to go through all the traumas and the lessons and this and that until you find your self worth. So the journey of surrendering and let go is always layers and layers of an onion right down to the seed. Oof. Yep. I um I talked about my books last week the the how the dancing souls came about. Mm. And when I watch the video or the shorts that I've been putting up on TikTok and Facebook, I'm sitting here going, I'm really anchored in that because I always felt detached from them because they were so painful to write. It was a painful experience to go through and face the trauma. It was painful to go deep inside knowing, believing, that's all I knew at that moment was believing there was something better inside of me than all the lies that were perpetuated on me. And the minute I found my light, it was like, <sighs> but I don't think I knew the full ramification of what that light was because now it's the journey of coming back from that darkness. And that's why these next five books are coming out is the journey coming back from that. But when I talked about the books, because I wanted to eventually feel like I owned those books in the, instead of them being detached, detached from them. And yes, it's been quite a few years since I've had the books around me, but to talk about it and feel like, what a great experience. Oh yeah, that was a great experience. No, but it really <laughs> was uh, on so many levels. Because if I didn't go through that, I would still be that mess of a person and I would never be where I am now or live into the potential that I see that I want to go in. And so sometimes when we go through those dark moments, it is about that release and getting all that angst out and, and getting rid of the, the darkness and the not knowing and remembering that we really are spiritual beings and there is a God, whatever that looks like to anybody out there, there is something greater out there because we're striving for something. And, but I think the part that got me the most when I talked about it was when I left my body for three days and spirit knew that was coming because they gave me like the biggest bag of Doritos I had ever seen in my life from Costco. And I ate them for three days. All I knew how to do was go to the bathroom and drink coffee, make coffee. That was it. I couldn't do anything else. And I realized at that moment, it took six months to know what happened, but I was out of my body for three days and they were giving me the option that I could leave. And I chose to stay and it got worse, but I decided there was something bigger that I wanted to do, even though my mission was done, I gave myself, as people said, a gift, which it wasn't at the time, but it definitely was a gift to myself because 
look at what I've done and created in such a short period of time. And yeah. that's how fast we can move in our life. It may not feel like we're moving fast when we're in it, but we really are moving very, very quickly. You know, I want to say this because this is what just came to me. It's like we're part of a web, right? So if we are that, that creator of that web, we've created a web so extended that we can't see the outside of where it's kind of going because the web is so big. We're focusing on the inside and keep on moving through the inside part of it. And as we are, are building within ourselves, within the inside, and the web grows outwards, it's like anything could touch it and vibrate back towards you because now your web, your energetic frequency is out that far. So as you bring yourself in that place of center and really feel this expansion, like how you're feeling that expansion, how you said, it's like all this, I feel, I'll say like, that's where I feel like the quantum leap happens or the quantum jump happens because now you're extending this vibrational frequency within you and you're becoming one with your, your future self, your higher self, because it's coming right back at you. Your actionable steps have created your new reality. And yep. as we're going, it's just, it's, it's such a magnificent thing because it could really happen overnight. When it, like that mind shift, like you said earlier, that mind shift is really what it is. And, but most importantly, it's the obedience to your actions and right. the intention behind why you're doing it. The intention behind why you're doing it. Well, I, my main intention at that point was I just wanted to be happy because I was never happy and it was always outside of me and it was really inside. And even though these seem so minor and stupid almost, it's what changed my life because instead of getting caught up in that drama anymore, it was like, no, my basement was a big game changer shift in me to say, no, I can't deal with that right now. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to stay happy and that can deal with whatever, whenever it's time to deal with it. And, th and that's what I did. And I just thought, okay, well, I'm just going to surrender, let the answers come allow yeah. things to happen because a $25,000 bill was not an option for me. Right. And, and he wouldn't, and they wouldn't have fixed the issue because they weren't even going to address the South side of the house where the water was coming in. I had gaping holes in my foundation and we found it when we pulled the plastic back. Did they do that? No, yeah. we're going to go fix the West side. That was fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? So trusting because it came down to, I trusted what I was receiving and allowing it, but I gave myself the patience to trust that and not, I got to hurry up and do it and be a control freak mm -hmm. because releasing control was huge for me. And yeah. it been, and that was a game changer too. But the key word there was happiness. Yeah literally the key word was happiness what does it take for you to be happy and stay happy yes you'll go through difficulties in life yes you'll experience some obstacles in your life but always to find that sense of happiness and find the reason why certain things are happening like this fly that's been here for four days and i can't get rid of it and literally i've tried but it's it, i'm trying to be happy with it swinging around me like it feels like it's going to go in my mouth shortly so, like there's no happiness in this fly right now but anyways i'm going to make happy of it because it's the exact verse fly that's exactly what's been going on for four days but it's truly about finding your happy and a lot of a lot of people don't even know what makes them happy because they've been so programmed or patterned to believe that what they are feeling is exactly what life is rather than saying, I am the creator of this. And you know this already, but it's like something you forget at the same time. I'm the creator of my happiness. What is my happiness? If I don't know what makes me happy, I need to go explore myself. And when I go explore myself towards the options of my happiness, that's when I'll find a deeper sense of myself and my truth. So it's like this, this happiness is an exploration of self. And that is the biggest key to everything you said there. 
because you will go through different obstacles towards your happiness, but you will stay focused towards what is going to make you happy and then put things away because it's not in my place right now to do this. I got to figure something else out to stay in that vibration of happy. That's, that's what I feel like. Yeah. Well, in vibration, happiness is what the next one down from love because love is the highest vibration you can be in. So if you're feeling happy, then you're, exp you're allowing so much more love to come in because people are feeling that love and okay. <laughs> Hi, we're on the other side of me. Oh, now we're back. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, God. <laughs> okay. Never it, never fails. it never fails. I think we must have got something right there about that love and happiness thing. Um, you know, because you know what? Love isn't the highest vibrational frequency. Authenticity is. Oh. Yeah. So it's funny how that was flipping and I was saying this in my head and I'm killing myself laughing. And this is so authentic of us because this is what always happens to us. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. That was perfect. Okay. Authenticity, love, happiness makes sense to me because the more we express who we are being authentic, that creates that love vibration that keeps that happiness up and makes it easier to go through life sometimes. And we got to take a quick commercial break. Are you ready to step into your true potential? Kathleen Flanagan's Get Into Alignment session helps you break through blocks, balance your energy, and align with your highest self. Experience clarity, purpose, and flow like never before. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and unlock the power of living in alignment today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network, and I have Zach Liotis in the room. And we were just commenting and laughing about what just happened because we had it just a tad wrong, like I had it a tad wrong, <laughs> and I got corrected by the higher source. So I'm going to let Zach take this one over because she happened to have been the messenger of my misspeaking. <laughs> Not necessarily because love is great, but when you have that self-love, you start to shine differently. You start to be in that place of authenticity. Just like we said before, when you release the baggage of your past, your traumas, your imposter syndromes, fear of what others think about you, here's this fly again. Um, all these things that hold us back from being in our true light or true authentic self. Because when you have self-love, you have boundaries. When you have self-love, you practice your boundaries when you have self-love you you only accept respect from people and how people speak to you so that's why self-love is is high on the on the scale love period but then when you when you get into that love and that self-love and you become authentically who you are you truly are that enlightened soul within yourself and and that's why spirits like there's more levels to it we're still stuck in that five fifth dimension but when we go up to the 12th dimension like i was saying to you during the commercial break there is a whole lot there that we got to continue digging deeper within my favorite place the dark attic down below <laughs> um and, and then coming up to like that six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve. i mean there's more dimensions than 12. 12 is just you know where you want to be at in this day and age that what we're going through right now you want to be in that you don't want to have this veil over you you want to be be in that veil you want to see what's going on heaven and earth you know there's a whole prayer on being on heaven and earth you know so so it's really about bringing that veil but bringing it that heaven and earth as one really living in our truth our higher light our creative self just like our creator so that is being the light of the world and having that sense of constant transformation to recognize yourself. Ooh. So, and it's manifesting season. This is what I want to say. Okay. So I feel like spirit saying change the wheels here. Can we change some wheels? We have some time. Can we change this up a little yep. bit? Yep. Okay, great. 
because we're coming into manifestation season right now. And the more authentic you are with yourself and the more that you set intentions to create the life that you want to create and work through the lower vibrations that come up of fear, guilt, shame, self doubt, all those things, the more you work through there, the energy of November is ready to like propel you to that next level. It's like amplifying our energetic frequency to like really bring light to that web I was speaking before, because as we're creating and, and, putting the seeds of our intention there and we're creating this vibrational frequency outward, we start to really magnetize ourselves. So November is really month of magnet, uh, magnetizing yourself into something greater. Why? Because now we're coming into a new moon on the 1st of November. Then we're going into a full moon of, um, in on the 15th of November. And then we go into pre shadow of, Mer of Mercury retrograde and, and when mercury goes forward so this is the or sorry backwards so this is the whole situation when it comes to that that is telling us like we truly need to let go and i always say don't play mercury for your problems hermes is not your problem hermes is trying to solve your problem so that you could step deeper into your light you know when people say oh my god it's mercury retrograde everything's gonna fall apart no you, everything needs to fall apart so you could come together so you need to say thank you to Mercury retrograde for making you step into your truth by letting go of, you know, all that heaviness and darkness that you may be holding on to and really raising your vibrational frequency to that 10, 11, 12 um, rector scale when it looks at when you're looking at the emotional vortex chart. I don't even know what that thing's called, but I look at it all the time. So I think it's remarkable. I want to make a comment about that because I remember we talked about the last Mercury retrograde in August and it seemed like it just seemed to linger on for two more months after it went direct. <laughs> and, and we talked about everybody blaming Hermes for everything. And I just remember as you're saying that, I'm going, oh my God, I so get what she's saying here because even though it felt like Mercury retrograde kept on going long after it was direct, because I think that was a big foreshadowing for me mm -hmm. to like really go further deeper down because I think I hit something, but it, I wasn't done within the retrograde, but it kept pushing me down because I'm also expanding out my, my light. I'm opening up my voice. I'm speaking more. I'm doing more. My web is getting bigger. And I went into almost of a, like a depression, but it wasn't a depression. What it was, <laughs> at that point was that I was in the race mind and I don't normally get in the race mind. And I asked spirit, I said, why is this happening? I just want to die and go home. And they said, you're here to show them how to come out of this race mind consciousness that everybody's trapped in. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then it was like this big shift happened. Not that this was ready yet, but this was because of all of that, you know? Yeah, That's absolutely. Mercury sets you up for three months. It gives you literally guidance. It gives you um, encouragement. It gives you a blueprint. There's so much when I love working with Mercury retrograde because there's like, you got Hermes, you got Apollo, you got um, Dana, you got Cleopatra, you got Aphrodite. You have so many goddesses and that work with the energies of Mercury retrograde that, that you become so empowered because the, the energy is so potent at these times. You got Venus at the same time. I don't know if she's going into retrograde when Mercury is in retrograde. She typically does something crazy, Venus. So there's just so much love in bringing to yourself. Again, we're talking about that self love, bringing that love to yourself. And this is another thing I'm hearing spirit saying to me, it's not love to get from one person, but when you realize that love is everywhere, when you're harnessing love, you will never feel depleted from love. Because if you're looking for love from one person, you're cutting yourself short because everything out there is giving you a sense of love. Breath is giving you love. Fresh air is giving you love. The sun's giving you love. Even the clouds are giving you some love. Not the artificial ones that they're throwing out there sometimes at us, but the other real ones that may be out there, right? So if you look at everything as a sense of love and you raise that frequency to that love, and, and with retrograde, they give you these blueprints, you start to shift because that's where you've put your intention and energy during those three weeks retrograde is to retract and upgrade your spiritual 
evolution. That's why it's retro and grade. And the more that you retract and move forward, retract and move forward, but using discernment along the way, you'll get a lot further. So I could imagine what's going to happen to you for this retrograde and what's going to you know, transpire in the next three months when the next retrograde comes out. Because we have we get our blueprint, then we have three months to work the blueprint. And those are you could take massive quantum leaps during Mercury retrograde because they're pulling you back. They're pulling you into the lower vibrational frequencies. They're pulling you into the root and the sacral and the solar because that's where all that gunk is sitting. And then when you just blast off and propel the other way and you know what you want, you're making that quantum leap, but you might go through emotional eruptions along the way and if you don't know how to deal with those that's when you call someone like kathleen or myself and we help you through that whole process because we've been through that process that process makes sense to us and you might think sometimes we're telling you oh my god that's so good i'm happy you're going through that we're crazy but you have to go through that if you were to read any of kathleen's books you'll see why she said it was a hard journey for her to go through this awakening spirit because we have to go through difficulty to find the light and in that darkness. So as soon as you see that light and you transform that, you can't unsee what you've learned. Oof, mouthful. That's very true. That's very true. And everything we do and what we feel, we feel everything. We are an emotional being. We learn through our emotions. We think we learn up here. No, we don't. We take everything in our environment and we make a story around it. We make a judgment around it. We yeah. make... We make shit up. Sorry about that. We have an MSQ degree running rampant at that moment. And yeah. I remember in my 40s, Michael and I used to talk about, oh, your MSU degree is running rampant because we're making stories up as we're going along, right? And when we started realizing that, I didn't also, and that's just been recent that I realized that's what our brain is designed to do. So we let this run our life. Yeah. When we're supposed to be letting our heart run our life and we, and nobody wants to deal with emotions that most people can't even identify an emotion, which is really sad because how can you grow if you can't identify an emotion? I had to learn how to identify in my emotions. I mean, it was like, well, what do you feel? I don't know. Sad, depressed, suicidal. I mean, I, what was love, happiness, joy. I didn't really know what that was. And it was so foreign to me when I did have those emotions that I immediately went back into, you know, the darkness because that was easy. It was comfortable, but I yes. had to learn how to understand what I was feeling because I had to bring this in so I can understand it because I realized if I was making forward movement, it was because I was passionate about where I was going. You're never going to get there because I have a goal of a million dollars. Oh yeah. Universe is really responding to that. But if you're happy and you're joyful and you're a kid and you say this and you're taking your baby steps and you're working with spirit and you're just like ee, 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 kind of thing, it's going to happen, but it's going to happen at the right time, not your time, the right time. When Divine this, timing. Yeah. When this is designed, when this is aligned with that energy frequency, that's when it will manifest. And you don't know when this is going to align any more than I do, but I can see things moving closer and closer and closer together. And with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we'll end the show. Feeling overwhelmed? Take a moment to reconnect with your inner peace. Join Kathleen Flanagan's powerful de-stress meditation designed to help you release tension, calm your mind and restore balance. Just a few minutes can transform your day. Visit KathleenMFlanagan.com and start your journey to tranquility today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network, and I have Zach Liotis in the room. And we just finished up with, God, I don't even know anymore. Um, <laughs> no, just really coming into alignment and the trajectory yeah. that we're going. <clears throat> um, and allowing that love to come back in <clears throat> to actually help us to move into becoming a whole human being. And the energy is supporting us in that. And that's the one thing that I've noticed 
a lot is I'm going up in frequency and not knowing where I am sometimes because there is a different vibrational frequency and density doesn't work in higher vibrations. Mm -hmm. So when I'm not sure where I am, I just sit and be with that energy frequency because that's ultimately where I want to go. I want to go higher, but I have to allow myself to get my body there or to understand what I'm feeling. And if you don't know, always ask. The answers always come. You just have to ask. And be patient. And be patient. Sometimes <laughs> it's like a challenge because you and I both know that. What's going on? I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> right? I know. I, I think my patience has gotten a little better. I'm just kind of like, now, you know what? Whatever it is, what it is, I'll figure it out when the time comes. Like, because I always call God a clutch God. Like I'll be doing something I'm like, I know you're the clutch God. I know you might be testing me out right now, but I know I'll be fine because I know you always show up because you're the clutch. Like you, you always got my back. You always got, it's, it's funny. I always say that. And it's like, boom, something happens. I'm like, all right, see, I told you clutch God, you always got my back. And that's the belief that I have inside of me that God will never leave me without really providing any of my needs. My needs are always met. Yep. And, and the more that I, I step into that, I feel like that's my truth. It might not be your truth, but that's my truth. And the more I step into that truth of myself, it's like becoming one with creator, higher consciousness, right? And I feel that when you start recognizing that oneness within yourself of being like, but I am the creator of all things because the creator made me in his, in his vision. The creator made me as one. I'm not him, but I am one of him in that sense. And so when I get into that frame of mind, which is such a beautiful place to be, because then everything changes, but you know, when you get out, when you get in your car and someone slow comes in front of you, you're like, ah, and you're like, okay, this is not the oneness of what I was feeling. So let me come back into, again, that word alignment, because you've just allowed someone to take you out of your peace. And, and there's a reason why that person may be pulled up in front of you. Because you have to slow down, but he could have saved you from an accident further up. So I always try to find the goodness in everything, but I know when I'm in my head a lot. And if when that happens, like last week, that kept on happening. Why are these people coming in my way and telling me to slow down? Like, God, what is it? Like, let me just be. And then I fall down the stairs. It's like, no, you need to slow down. And I'm just like, all right, well, now I can't even sit down because that even hurts my bum. I can't even walk because that hurts my bum because I fell down the stairs. But I could just only lay down now. And that's just useless for me. Like I can't do much laying down. Right. So it's interesting when we really allow ourselves to evolve, trust, listen, and then move forward. And also let go because the show is really about letting go and doing all those things. You will fully let go and surrender. That's a beautiful place to be for 2025. I think so. I know that it, 2025 is going to be a pivotal year of change. I know that. And, yeah. and it's going to start in November, like you talked about, and you're bringing a little bit more of the science astrology into November to explain that. But there's also so many other things involved in November because November is a, a dynamic month. Anyways, every single year, November is a very mm -hmm. dynamic month and yeah. massive things. Just like August is another one. August is a big yeah month of change and so is november and most people don't realize that because that's when i see the most t the times where i'm usually the quietest in myself because it's like what's going on okay and i have to find my way through whatever i'm feeling or i look outside in the world and see what's going on on the world because i'm being affected by something yeah yeah and, and so I think that's, that's why doing this, like what we're in, we're both clearing the way for ourselves now, getting ready. So we're ready to catapult in January, not start in January. You want to do the cleaning now. So that way, when January 1st hits and that energy will shift on January 1st, I promise you, it will shift like that. And if you're not ready, you're going to get flattened. Yeah. I find April is another month. April is another month for transformation. When I look at it, because it's like you just came out of January and then uh -huh. you're like, oh, yeah, I'll do this and I'll do that. And then, and then you get, get lost in that I got to do and life takes over. And then spring shows up and it's like, okay, let me get recentered here again. 
And of course, it's my birthday month, so that's another thing for myself. Because <laughs> that's what I really go in with myself, and I'm like, all right, kiddo, another ride around the sun. Where are we here? So I'm going to take April for a transformational month as well. Yeah. I think I like May. May is mine. I, May is a happy month for me for some reason. I just always feel joyful in May. Mm. And I, I don't know if it's because of the spring. I don't know if it's because Mother Mary's month. You know, it's it's just a happy month for me. And it seems like it takes a while for May to go through. And I don't care because I never want May to end. I don't know what it is about May, but I just I always get a kick out of that month too so i think we all have our months i mean there are certain things that are are going to be what they are and then there are certain things that make us feel a certain way and it's just because and the only reason i say it is because i pay attention to it i've always paid attention to it and may has always been a special month for me even when i was a little kid because in catholic school and you know you i always brought lilacs for our mother mary i always did that yeah. But anyways, we're at two minute mark. And so Zach, how can people get a hold of you? You can reach me at the, if you're on YouTube, Spiritual Hustler on Instagram. Um, you could find me on bfuclub.com. I actually am doing, starting to do again, a uh, full and new moon meditation. So that I'm so excited. <laughs> I never thought I'd be this excited. It's like the comeback is February 1st at 7 to 8.30 Eastern Standard. Um, you could find it here on Instagram. I will have some links over there. And I'm really excited about this moon because not only is it my comeback moon of not doing meditations for the last, I don't know, like five, six years, it is November. So this is the month that my moon of Scorpio comes to life as much as my Aries gets to play in there. So it's a double whim on that one. So I'm excited. Thank you, Kathleen, for having me too. Oh, you're welcome, Zach. And I really appreciate you coming on the show. As always, <clears throat> it's always insightful. We always have something glitchy. <laughs> and spirit is always here having fun laughing at us. So I really do appreciate when you come on because it's so much fun for me. And if any of you enjoyed the show today, then feel free to leave a like or a comment in the show in the um, on YouTube. Um, <laughs> So that way, <laughs> I know you like this because then I can give, we can bring Zach on a little bit more, if we, you know, time permitting kind of thing. Um, if you are struggling with anything we talked about, feel free to reach out to Zach or myself that um, we will be more than happy to kind of guide you or share whatever you need help with. We'll be more than happy to do that with you. My books, Dancing Souls, The Call, Awake, Awakened and The Dark Night of the Soul or up on Amazon and KathleenMFlanagan.com. And be sure to visit Awakening Spirit and Grandma's Natural Remedies.net and enter Brave TV for the coupon codes that are there. And that concludes the show for this week. And we will I will see you next week, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week. <music>